today we're going to talk about the Rightway spring suspension system. I'm just going to go over what you get when you order like a tandem axle gauge. So this is the gauge. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this up. Got our instructions here. And we've got our digital gauge. This is a, a Bluetooth gauge. Uh, we've got power, ground, and then um, this is for the sensors, and they're numbered. Sensor 1's on the left, sensor 2's on the right. Now if we go further into this box, we've got a power cable extension. So this is for the power and ground when you wire it into the truck. We've got a mounting bracket. This is an aluminum, aluminum mounting bracket. So normally you'd put this you know, on the side of your trailer or you know, back by the axles or something. Um, so that would go, you know, that would go on there and then bolt that all together, get the idea. <clears throat> now we've got our hardware bag. So this is all the bolts to mount the bracket to your truck and mount the bracket to the gauge. And then we've got um, zip ties for all the wiring. We've got some crimp connectors. These are, uh, let's dump this out. These crimp connectors are heat shrink type. So once you, once you crimp them, you take a heat gun and you can heat shrink these ends. And then this heat shrink is to go over the whole thing. So after you've heat, sh heat shrink the two, put this over it and do the whole thing. And we'll sh I'll show you that later. All right, so that's it for the gauge. I'll go ahead and clean this up and then show you the sensors. All right, let's talk about the sensor kit. Um, this is a kit for a five inch axle, round axle. Uh, so in here we've got some zip ties and heat shrink and crimp connectors, just like our other kit. There's also a little hose clamp in there and a spacer. Let's just open this up. <clears throat> All right, we got our heat shrink. Uh, this is a, a spacer for the wiring clip, and here's the wiring clip. Uh, let's see, this uh, is for the sensor. We'll use that later. And our heat shrink connectors and zip ties. And this extension harness is for the sensor wire itself. So this is the pickup coil, and that goes over the sensor bar. And then when you connect it to the gauge, you use this extension to get to where the gauge is mounted. Uh, let's see, this is for the cover. Let's get the cover out first. So once all your uh, sensors installed and your blocks are welded down and everything, this cover goes over everything. And that's where this spacer and the clip come into play. And then this clamp is what goes around the whole axle and clamps it down. Just one, one across the center. Here's our uh, welding jig. So this has the, this is like a disposable welding bar. And then these are the blocks that hold the sensors. So once it's all welded down, you'll take this out, drop the sensor bar in there. And this is our sensor bar. So this thing's really delicate. So be, be careful when you're handling this. You don't want to bend it or set it on a table and smash it or anything like that. So once this gets welded down, this thing will drop in, it'll drop in and then slide over, and then you'll tighten the set screws down. So that's it for our sensor kit. All right, so the first thing you wanna do when you're installing this onto an axle is mount these sensor blocks. So they come pre-installed on a welding jig, so it's flat on the table. Um, and what we'll do is we'll measure the center of our axle. We want it to be right in the middle, right on the very top. Um, so use a tape measure, mark out the center of your axle. <clears throat> so we'll say our center is like right here. Okay, and then we'll set this on there and say, all right, that's the middle. And then you'll mark, you'll draw a circle around each uh, sensor block like this. So where these circles are is where you'll use your grinder or your sandpaper to clean off the metal. You want no paint on there and you want it to be a rough surface or you know, weldable surface. So it should be clean, shiny metal. Um, so go ahead and we grind that down. And once that's ground down, we would set that back on, centered. 
and then use these longer zip ties to hold, hold it down while you're welding, like this. And then now you'd go ahead and weld across this length here. So, so buzz a little weld there, and then on the opposite corner on this side, and then go to here, and then back across. You want to be welding diagonally, and then let it cool. So the welds don't have to be super strong. They just have to be there. There's not a lot of force going on here. Um, anything that can melt those metals together is going to be good enough. There's almost nothing going on with that. That sensor just needs to not move, and welding's the best way to do that. So it's not like it's got to hold up a building or anything. So after you've welded, uh, you want to go ahead and paint everything, uh, make sure it won't rust. And then once everything's cool, you can go ahead and loosen these set screws. And we're just going to slide this welding jig out of there. And you can either slide it all the way out one side, or you can use this cutout if there's something here blocking, you know, like a brake, uh, brake actuator or something. You can just slide that right out and discard that thing or save it for something. So the next step is to mount our sensor bar. And same thing, so this thing will slide in through this cutout and then you can slide it over. And you want to make sure that you get this grooved end on the block that has one set screw. So we'll slide that in and we'll go ahead and tighten down just the one side that has the groove. You'll feel it kind of lock into place. Okay, so we'll leave that tight. And now this set screw, once it's tight, we don't really ever need to loosen it. So the one single one, we'll just leave that alone. Um, and when without touching the sensor, uh, go ahead and tighten the other ones like that. Okay. Now we want to put uh, our pickup coil on. And here's where you kind of have to make a decision about which direction you want the wires to go. Okay, so if you want your uh, wire to go to that side, you can just put it on the axle that side and you can rotate this around however you need to, as long as you don't bend it. Um, so if I want my wire going that way, go on that side. If I want it going the other way, go on this side. So our gauge is over there, so we're going to send our wire that way. So now uh, the next step would be to put this hose clamp around the pickup coil and cinch it down. Okay, it doesn't have to be real tight. It just, you want to keep it from walking off of there. So that looks good. Now the next thing we want to do is put our cover on. So we have to route this wire through the hole in the side of the cover. Get that set on there. And then we have this little spacer, it's like a little washer. So we'll thread that through also. Okay, now you get this about, about where you want it. And then we'll use this, uh, this wire, this is a strain relief for the wire. So the way it works is it just kind of goes around the wire like this. And then you crimp it down with some pliers. And then you have to shove this through the cover. just locks into place so that keeps your wire from you know if it gets tugged on it won't rip anything apart all right so the last step for this would be to put the hose clamp on all right okay so at this point our sensor is ready to connect to our gauge and I'm gonna go ahead and use this 25 foot extension wire and I'll show you how we like to connect these to keep water out. Take these slugs off. And twist these wires up. And we'll use a couple of our crimp connectors here. I'll go ahead and put one on each, one on each wire. Okay. 
All right, and now I'm gonna thread this heat shrink over it so that it's ready when I need it. And I'll just shove it down the wire over there. And then we'll go ahead and crimp the sensor wires together. Okay, we got black going to black. And now we'll have red going to red. So now we've got these crimped down. Uh, I want to use a heat gun or a lighter to shrink the heat shrink down. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so those are good and sealed. Now we'll slide this other heat shrink up to cover the whole connection. So once we get this shrunk down, uh, water won't be able to get in from either side. So you want to make sure that it's not hanging over the edge or, you know, you want to make sure it's centered. Okay, now I've got a good watertight seal, and we'll go ahead and do this for the gauge side. So we've got our sensor connected. This is a two sensor gauge, so I've got another one back behind it, so it thinks there's two connected. Um, when we go ahead and turn the gauge on, it searches for sensors. Once it finds them, it displays the weight. So this is kind of our uncalibrated weight. And the next thing we wanna do during our install is check to see that the sensors are at their correct starting point. Um, and so how we check that, there's two ways we can do it. So the first way is to check it on the gauge. So we'll go ahead and power it off, hold the blue button, press power. It'll show us our firmware number, screen test, Bluetooth address, tells us what type of sensor, this is a bar sensor. And this is our frequency output. So right now we're at 7.950, so we're a little bit high. Um, we can hit up arrow to get to sensor two, and that's the other, other one, so we're at 6935. We can also check this in the app, so if you're by yourself underneath the truck, you can do this without having a buddy tell you what the numbers are. So we'll go ahead and add this gauge to our app, so we'll do plus trailer. So, okay, so we just tap on this scale, and it's going to bring up the scale details page. And when we scroll all the way to the bottom, it shows our vibrating wire sensors. And we've got sensor one at 795.35, sensor two at 693.56. And we're shooting for 650 to 750. So our sensor two is fine, but our sensor one needs some adjustment. So now I'm going to take the cover back off of the sensor we just installed, and I'll show you how to adjust that. All right, so we'll loosen up our clamp and slide that out of the way. And move this over so we can access the side with two set screws. And this thing can just kind of, it, it's not really affecting the measurement too much, so it can just kind of sit there. So what we'll do is we'll loosen up the two set screws. Okay, now if I want the number to go down, I just push on the outside of this thing really lightly really slowly and you'll see that number start to fall. So I'm going to shoot for 700. So once I'm at 700, I tighten, lightly tighten down one of these screws. See where it gets to. 736, I'm going to tighten the other screw. Okay, now I'm going to extra tighten down all of them see where we're at. So we're at 734. That's perfect. So if our sensor had been, let's say it was too low, it's unlikely, but let's say it was at 600 and you needed to raise up the number. Um, so instead of pushing on the outside, you'd have to push on the inside of this little block. So you'd loosen up your set screws and then you'd use a pen or, or a pointy object and just lightly push that up and you could watch the number start to climb. 
So right now we're over our target, we're at 800 or something. But anyway, the number will start to climb up and then you just tighten it down right there. So we'll go ahead and put our cover back on. Now keep in mind, this is with an empty trailer and this is with the axle not jacked up anywhere. It's gotta be sitting flat on the ground in the level shop floor or out, you know, at least on level ground. Um, yeah, no jacks anywhere in an empty trailer. So once that's set, we can go ahead and tighten our clamp back down. And you'll see it change a little bit once we tighten the clamp down, but we're still in range, so we're okay. So now this thing's ready to calibrate.